phenasteride and minoxidil are two medications which are indicated for the treatment of hair loss. However, they are not similar and they belong to different categories. They differ in many aspects like how they act to prevent hair loss and even they differ by their uses. For example, phenasteride is given as oral tablet whereas minoxidil is given by topical solution. So in this video, we will discuss the different facts about phenasteride and minoxidil like how do they act, which is better, are they combined and how are they given. All such key facts we will discuss in this video. First, let us see what these medications are. Phenasteride and minoxidil are different category of drugs which are used to prevent hair loss. Phenasteride is classified as 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. This medication is initially introduced to treat prostate enlargement in the men. It is also called as benign prostatic hyperplasia. Phenasteride can reduce the prostate size thereby improves the symptoms of BPH. However, at a low dose, phenasteride can also be used to treat hair loss in the men. On the other hand, minoxidil is a vasodilator. It is also used in the treatment of hair loss, but it is not having any action on prostate enlargement. So, minoxidil is only used in the management of hair loss. Where are they used? Just we have discussed that phenasteride and minoxidil can prevent the hair loss and increase the hair growth. Therefore, these two medications can be used in the treatment of male pattern baldness. It is also called as androgenetic alopecia. It is a hair loss in the men due to the effect of androgens. With growing age, loss of hair can be observed in the men due to hormonal changes. Normally, hair loss can be observed after an age of 50 years due to these hormonal changes. But in a few people, these hormonal changes can be observed in early days, leading to hair loss even at the younger age. This androgenic alopecia is also highly connected with genetic factors. So in the male pattern baldness, initially the hair loss can be observed on the front and sides of the head. Later hair loss can be observed at crown area as well as vertex. It also associated with shrinking of hair follicles which results in the decreased formation of new hair. Even hair becomes shorter and thinner due to shrinkage of hair follicles. Many of the risk factors are responsible for male pattern baldness. The important risk factor is the family history where genetics decide the hair loss in the people even in the early ages. However, few of the lifestyle modifications may also lead to hair loss. For instance, people with stressful life may have early hair loss. In the people with chronic high blood pressure, again hair loss can be observed leading to alopecia. Even in people with coronary heart disease, male pattern baldness can be observed due to decreased blood supply to the hair follicles. To treat this condition, both phenasteride and minoxidil can be given. Both of these drugs can increase the hair growth, but they take few months to show their beneficial effects. A significant hair growth can be observed after 6 to 12 months of treatment with these medications. Use in women. Minoxidil can be used to prevent the hair loss both in the men as well as in the women. It increases the blood flow to the hair follicles which increase the hair growth and prevents the further hair loss. That's why it can be used both in the men as well as in the women. So it can be used both in the male pattern as well as female pattern baldness. However, phenasteride is not suitable for women. Since it acts by modifying the androgenic hormones, it is not useful in the female pattern baldness. So this is the other difference between the minoxidil and phenasteride. Now let us see how they work. Phenasteride is going to reduce the levels of one of the androgenic hormone dihydrotestosterone, commonly known as DHT. Whenever these DHT levels are excessively elevated, it results in the hair follicular shrinkage that results in loss of hair as well as formation of thin and shorter hair. So in the men with elevated levels of DHT, male pattern baldness can be observed. Now phenacetide can block the DHT levels thereby it can improve the hair growth. Testosterone acts as a precursor for DHT. This testosterone is going to be converted into dihydrotestosterone by 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Now, phenasteride can block the activity of this 5-alpha reductase enzyme. 
thereby it can reduce the levels of DHT in the body. This improves hair growth and reduce the hair loss in the men. Minoxidil acts by different mechanism. It acts as a vasodilator. One of its target is the ion channels. On the vascular smooth muscle, ATP sense to potassium channels are expressed on which minoxidil can act as activator. When these channels are activated, potassium can go outside resulting in the hyperpolarization. This results in the relaxation of vascular smooth muscle leading to vasodilation. This improves the blood flow to the hair follicles resulting in the increased hair growth. Minoxidil can also act by other mechanisms. For example, it can also increase the cell proliferation which also improves hair growth. How are they given? Finasteride is given as a oral tablet. It is given at a low dose compared with its use in prostate enlargement. This medication is given at a dose of 1 mg given once a day. However, it cannot show immediate effects. It should be used for at least 3 months in order to show a significant effect on hair growth. Minoxidil is given by different route. It is available as a topical solution or foam. It is available at 2 strengths 2% as well as 5%. The right concentration of solution can be used based on the severity of hair loss and whatever may be the strength each time 1 ml of solution is going to be applied topically and it can be used 2 times a day. However, the maximum dose is 2 ml per day. About 2 ml it should not be used. At this point, again finasteride and minoxidil show their difference. They are used at different routes where finasteride is taken into the body and minoxidil is only topically applied on the affected area. Now let us the side effects of these medications. Since finasteride affects the hormonal levels, it can produce few of the side effects that are related with androgens. With use of finasteride, we can observe breast tenderness in the men. Even breast enlargement can be observed. Due to these effects, nipple discharge can also be observed in the men. Even it is used at low dose, still it can produce few of the hormonal effects, leading to few of the side effects like difficulty, ejaculation and loss of libido, decreased sexual desire. So with use of finasteride, erectile dysfunction may be observed due to its hormonal effects. On the other hand, minoxidil produce quite different effects. Since it is applied topically, it can produce itching sensation as well as redness at the applied area. It can also produce another side effect called hirsutism. It is a growth of the hair at any part of the body resulting in unwanted hair growth. These are the local effects produced by minoxidil. However, when it is significantly absorbed into the systemic circulation, it can produce few of the other side effects. Particularly when it is used at higher doses, it can produce few side effects like dizziness, blurred vision and headache in the people. It can also produce flushing resulting in the redness of the face and skin. At very high doses, it can also induce chest pain in the people. So if we see the side effects, finasteride produce few of the troublesome side effects. Particularly sexual side effects are observed with finasteride, whereas minoxidil produce local side effects initially. However, at higher doses, it can produce hypotensive side effects on the body. Withdrawal effects. What happens when finasteride or minoxidil are withdrawn suddenly? Finasteride should be administered at least 3 months continuously to show its action, whereas minoxidil may take around 6 to 12 months to show its beneficial actions. If these medications are discontinued within this time, the hair growth may be reduced and hair loss can be reabsorbed in the men. Therefore, for a better response, these drugs should be used continuously and stopping of these medication again results in loss of hair in the men. The next question, which is better? Now we have seen the finasteride and minoxidil. If we think which is better, it depends on many factors because these two drugs belong to the different category and they are given in different routes of administration. However, in terms of efficacy, finasteride is better because this medication produces hormonal change and it reduces the levels of DHT, which is the root cause for hair loss in the men. Therefore, finasteride is having more effect on the hair growth compared with minoxidil. However, in terms of side effects, minoxidil is better because this medication is lack of sexual side effects that are produced by finasteride. 
so both medications are having their advantages and disadvantages phenacetide is having the advantage of higher efficacy in increasing the hair growth whereas minoxidil is better in terms of mild side effects finally can they be combined now the final question is whether phenacetide and minoxidil can be combined or not phenacetide is going to reduce the levels of dht whereas minoxidil is going to increase the blood flow to the hair follicles we can see that they're having no common point at their mechanism so both can work in their own way to increase the hair growth therefore these two drugs can be combined to produce a better effect on hair growth they're having no interactions at their mechanism or even at pharmacokinetics because they are given by different routes of administration therefore these two drugs can be combined safely to produce a better response on hair growth however they should be used carefully and side effects should be carefully monitored and a continuous use of these medications is the key point for better results on hair growth so that's all about these two medications finasteride and minoxidil even though both of medications are different they can be combined finasteride is going to reduce the dht levels whereas minoxidil is going to improve the blood flow finasteride is given as an oral tablet minoxidil is given as a topical solution finasteride is better in its efficacy and reduce the hair loss in the men however finasteride can produce few of the significant side effects like difficulty ejaculation leading to impotence whereas minoxidil when it is absorbed into the systemic circulation it can produce dizziness and chest pain in the people however these two medications can be combined safely to induce a better hair growth in the men so that's for today i hope this video is useful to you if you really like this video please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button to support our work thanks for watching see you in the next video